Who is that one stranger that you never forgot? My cousin and I were visiting Kyoto, Japan. It was cold and we clearly looked lost. Nobody spoke English and most of the signs were in Japanese. Suddenly, an old Japanese man walked up to us, showed us the bus stop, which bus to take, and where to disembark. Then since the bus was still 45 minutes away, he took us to a nearby Izaka, small bar. Turns out he was a professor at Kyoto University and was on his way home. He hung out with us, had a beer, and then he was gone. I do not remember his name, but I will never forget how energetic and kind this man was. Well I guess I forgot about him in one way. I was in a motorcycle accident where a car swerved head on at me, and I took a major blow to the head. Thankfully I always wore a helmet, so that took 95% of the blow. But I was still understandably very shook, I barely remember getting hit, and then bam I was just laying there on the ground almost blacked out, drifting from consciousness to unconsciousness. And this dude in a company van pulled over asking what the frick was wrong with the car that hit me since he saw it all happen, and the dude ran over to me, helped me up to my legs. I remember falling over once after he picked me up, and drove me to the nearest hospital in his company van. It was only a couple of blocks away, so no need to call an ambulance. I remember crying, and repeatedly saying I'm so sorry for no reason. Something in my brain obviously fried from the fall, and then I noticed my arm was bleeding all over his seat, which made me say sorry even more and he laughingly said it's okay, the company will pay for that. Then we arrived, and he took me to the ear and waited with me for a doctor to come. The doctor checked me up, took the helmet off, which I still wore for the whole trip, which is very important until a doctor can make sure it's fine to take it off, and made sure I wasn't seriously hurt. Meanwhile the dude that helped me is still sitting in the waiting room for me. I took a couple of rays because my arm hurt a lot, but it was just a hairline crack in my bone, so nothing major. But this still took like an hour to get the pictures developed, etc. After that I was free to go, and I saw the dude still sitting there, waiting for me. And not just that, turns out directly after he left me with the doctors, he drove to the accident scene and took photos of everything for insurance purposes, and also called the police. He also propped up my motorbike against a nearby wall to protect it for more damage, and then he went back to the air, waited for me, and then texted all pictures and information to me, and he also said he'd witness in case the woman that hit me tried to pull something legal against me, and then he drove me home and helped me into my bed. The dude literally took like 3 hours of his own time when he was supposed to be working, and helped me with everything instead, and I never even got his name. Big ramble, I know, I've just never talked about this before. My memory was so hazy from the concussion, but it all came back when I started writing this. The apologizing and laughing and stuff post-accident is shock. Cincinnati, Ohio, 2005. Just turned 18 a couple days before when my mom told me that because I'm an adult now that I can't live in military family housing with them anymore and I had to move, which was a lie, made the very poor decision to take a Greyhound bus from North Carolina to Iowa and after a couple of delays making this a 3 day trip, I finally arrive at Cincinnati with my next destination being a small town in eastern Iowa. I get to the bus terminal and the woman says oh, you missed it. The next bus going there doesn't leave until tomorrow night. It's about 9 in the morning. Meaning I was going to have to stay there for more than 24 hours in the terminal and I had no money and the last time the bus driver stopped off somewhere in Tennessee to let people buy food and stuff. I was too scared to get off the bus to get food from the trash. So I hadn't ate for days. Totally defeated. I just say oh. Okay and she says you aren't mad and I say no. It's not anyone's fault so she dashes out towards the buses and finds a driver about to leave to Davenport, Iowa. About 30 minutes from where I was going. This bus was a lot nicer than what I had been on for the past couple of days so I must have received some kind of upgrade. She saved me from being really hungry for an extra 2 days. I'm glad the girl was nice to you but I would like to punch your mom. I was about 17, and my buddy and I were driving to meet up with some friends. He was going way too fast, lost control, and after some crazy swerving around we popped the curb and hit a tree sideways in midair. The car was demolished, engine caught fire, him and I were both dazed. I came to with this middle aged black guy pulling me out of the wreck and telling me my friend is fine. I never got his name. 
but he pulled me from a burning car and I'll never forget him. Back in the 90s, my school went for a trip to India and we ate at this one small restaurant in Kovalam Beach, Kerala with a group of about 20 people. The waiters were kind enough to move two tables onto the beach for us, so we could eat with our feet in the sand. 10 years later, I visited Kovalam Beach by myself and ate there again. Suddenly this way to say, weren't you here 10 years ago, with a school or something? Dumbfounded I answered yes. He grinned and said I remember, we put the tables on the beach for you guys, didn't we? After 10 freaking years. I was waiting at a bus stop one day when a guy, maybe 50, bald, muscular, honestly a little intimidating, walked straight up to me and asked, how old are you? Comma 25, right answer, and just walked away. I have no clue what he wanted but I'm at least 27% sure that if I had lied, he would have killed me. And he knew the answer. That guy was you from the future and he hates how much of a little wimpy liar he used to be and was going to end it all that day. Good job not freaking it up. The gangster dude at the gas station who was walking up to the door with his friend and stopped to tell him, hold up. I gotta hold the door for this B as he held the door for me. Classic. Similarly the guys who were smoking by my car as I was leaving work late one night. I was the last to leave and I froze by the door seeing them gathered around my car. One guy looks up and yells, get the frick away from this lady's car. We're freaking her out and they all dispersed. I was 18 and on vacation in Ireland. Was sitting at a pub when an older gent next to me started up a conversation. We're talking and all of a sudden he drops this gem. Comma you know, the missus and I haven't been intimate in about 2 years now. God bless her soul though, she's been dead for 4. And then he cackled and wandered off, leaving me to sit there like what the frick. The guy who tried to pickpocket me in the busy market by grabbing my dong instead of my wallet. Trying to grab the real valuables. So back when I was in 5th grade, I was riding my bike in my neighborhood when I came across this toy company. I though it was a toy store so I walked nonchalantly into it, thinking very little. Anyway a man who I think was the manager welcomed me and asked me why I was there. I wasn't very sure so he went ahead and gave me a tour and walk throughout the company. He was a gentleman and even gave me a toy, can't remember what, when I left the building. A guy I met in the smoking area of Fabric, a huge club in London, at about 4am in May 2012. At the end of the conversation he said you know what's funny, we just chatted about our lives for an hour and don't even know each other's names, and that's why none of us will ever forget this moment. Club smoking areas are the most social areas on the planet, specifically clubs, like Fabric, that cater for DNB fans. The guy that approached me, the kid in hand-me-down clothes, with spray on blue hair, at a church gathering and told me you'll do something great, and then left. No one knew who he was, or where he came from. From time to time I'll look at my life and wonder if I've done it yet, or if I'm disappointing that stranger. When I was out jogging as an overweight person, I went past a young mom out walking with her baby stroller. After jogging myself near the brink of collapsing, because frankly I didn't know how to exercise in moderation. I was slowly dragging myself home. I passed the same mom sitting on a bench on my route home. And she simply told me, nice work. I'm still not physically fit to this day. But such simple words of encouragement from a stranger still warms my heart. I always want to say stuff like this. But I'm too awkward and would come off as rude. Not even just overweight people. But anytime I see someone running or riding their bike I think frick yeah. This grandmother I had a conversation with on a Six Flags ride. Her grandkids went before her and left her behind. So she hopped in the cart with me and my friend. Those little shoots. I went down from Leicester to Coventry to watch my team, Swansea, got off the train and asked this bloke, probably in his early 50s, if he knew how to get to the stadium. Turns out he was a Swansea fan, so we got the bus tog there. We were a couple of hours early, so went to the pub for a few beers. We then headed to the ground for a last beer before the game. We ended up sitting next to each other for the game. Then it turns out we were both going to London after the game. We got the train tog there and had a few more beers. We then said goodbye at St. Pancras Station. I spend about 6 hours with this bloke, and will most likely never see him again. 
The cowboy who was in the ER, in full rodeo get up, going from hand sanitizer station to hand sanitizer station filling up on sterile goo and sniffing his hands. He's going to end up in one of my books. This could be a movie, with Owen Wilson playing the character. When I was like 8 or 7, we went to a truck stop and I was waiting in line at the restroom. A stall opens up and I'm the only one in line until a guy goes up to the stall as the person there before is leaving. Before the man goes into the stall the first guy points at me and says hey man he was waiting first. The guy stopped and let me go then. Never gonna forget that legend. A guy named Jason sat with me after I got hit by a car. He waited when no one else did. Made sure I didn't die by the side of the road, and got help. I owe that guy my life. My sister did that for someone about 6 months ago. They then made a post on Instagram about it thanking the random blonde stranger for helping them and someone linked the two events together and told them who she was and they occasionally go out for coffee and catch up. A couple friends and I went to the beach got a hotel room and then things got kinda crappy people started arguing about little things about the trip effectively just making the whole mood of this mini vacation go to crap. So I wake up first go get breakfast and decide I'm gonna enjoy my time so I go down to the beach and just start collecting seashells. That's when I saw her she was walking back and forth reading a book she had these cut off jeans and this bright green t-shirt and had the fulliest, brightest and long red hair. She had kind of a sad look to her face though and it was just me and her standing in this cove of the beach. So I decided to go up to her and ask if she was okay. When I talked to her, her face lit up and her smile. It simple just took my breath away she told me she was okay just deep in thought and gets that kinda look on her face. We laugh chatted for a bit being the awkward 18 year old I was I said I'd get back to collecting my seashells and let her enjoy her day. About 5 minutes later she came up to me with a seashell and said this one's pretty I think you should have you, and there was that melting smile again. We walked on for a bit talking and then went our separate ways. If there was ever a story about the one that got away it was probably her. I don't even think we told each other our names just kinda collected seashells and made small talk. But I'll never forget the way she made me feel. Was in college. Was starting another fall semester. Had a new job. But no place to live after being screwed over by some people I had arranged to rent a room from before returning from an internship out of state. I was off work at 5am and had nowhere to go and just sleep. So, I decided to drive to Louisiana which was about 45 minutes away and do something. Ended up at a casino. Decided to go in with 100 bucks and a pack of cigarettes. Learned to play craps. Table got hot for the other players. One guy in particular was placing $1000 bets while I'm just doing the $15 minimums. Trying to learn the game. Big money ended up making about 12,000 over the course of my dice rolls. I lost my 100 after gaining some but losing out. I start to leave. The guy catches up to me before I make it out and asks me if I'm okay. Noticed I was real tired and frustrated looking. I just tell him I'm having a hard time. Don't get specific. He slaps 2000 in chips into my hands and tells me to have a better night and thanks me for the luck I brought him at the tables and just leaves after patting my shoulder. I cashed out and had a deposit and first 3 months of rent paid up on my new place by the end of the next day. If you're out there dude, thanks again. You were my hero that day, heck that year. I just hope I can do something like that for someone one day. Holy crap. I cannot fathom giving someone that kind of money. What a guy. I was at a convention and I had a panic attack, which led to hyperventilating. I managed to make my way to a hallway where I turned my face to the wall as I was very embarrassed and wanted to avoid attention as much as possible. People were passing me by, but one woman I didn't know stopped and asked if I was okay. She had a kid with her. I managed to gasp out that I was hyperventilating and having a panic attack. She put her hand on my shoulder, and told me it was okay and to breathe slowly in through my nose and out through my mouth. I know I'm not explaining it very well, but she was just so overwhelmingly kind, and she stayed with me until it passed, then smiled and left. I didn't even really get to thank her. I'll never forget her. Seven years ago, my girl and I broke up. Being in my early 20s and having the audacity to think I'd met the one true love of my life. I felt like my world was crashing around me. A few nights later, 
I went to a local bar by myself to try and straighten my head out with a fifth of bourbon. The bar's patio almost always gets full at night, and the only open seat was at my table. A pretty little blonde girl walks out, looks at the seat, smiles and says hi, how are ya? Sits down and starts smoking. We end up making small talk, which leads to me spilling all the overly personal crap that rational people don't dump on a stranger at a bar. I even remember crying at some point, but she wasn't weirded out or put off. She didn't judge me, she just listened and interjected occasionally to hear more details to get a better grasp of the situation. After an hour of losing my crap, I regained composure and ended up getting to know her. She had gone through a failed engagement about a year prior, and was now doing fine. Told me I'd be fine too, in time. At about 1am, after about 4 hours of talking about life and all the crappy things that come with it, she looked at her phone and said, Oh crap, I've gotta go. You take care, you hear? You'll find your happiness, I promise and left before I had the chance to get her phone number or even her name. I became a regular at that bar and have been back easily over 100 times in the past 7 years, but I've never seen her again. Obviously, I know now that failed relationships are far from the end of the world, but it really stuck with me that a person would take all that baggage on herself to make a complete stranger feel better, even if only for a moment. I really don't ever expect to run into her ever again at this point, but every time I go to that bar, I scan around and kind of hope she'll be there. Thank you for sharing, I needed this right now. There's always something special about something fleeting, something we don't know if we'll see ever again. Met a girl in the supermarket that had a skirt with the same print as my shirt. I was just chilling in the aisle and this guy was like, OMG your shirt looks the same as this girl. He led me to her and we proceeded to compliment each other. The print definitely looked better on the skirt haha. I was doing a PT for highway patrol. Some old guy who was waiting for a buddy to get to the finish line saw me struggling. I was sick the whole week before and didn't know I was having withdrawals from prednisone. I wasn't tapered off. I was in bad shape but refused to stop. As I ugly ran by him, he hopped the fence and started jogging next to me. He was saying, come on. Let's do this. You can do this. Just keep up with me. You're almost there that gave me a lump the last 40 yards and I somehow got the energy to sprint to the finish. It was like a dad teaching his daughter to ride a bike. Once he saw me go, he backed off and let me finish. I was 10 seconds over and couldn't move on to the hiring process for this recruitment. I wanted to thank him for helping me but he was already gone. When I used to coach field hockey there was a girl on the team who was a solid runner. When the girls had to run timed miles, she would finish early and go back to run with the girls at the back of the pack, cheering them on the whole way. It was pretty inspiring, really. I've told this story before, comma when I was 15, I was riding the train in SLC. It was a normal day, normal people riding the train, some professional, some clearly homeless. It was morning, suddenly a drunk homeless man collapsed, comma he just laid there confused, but couldn't get up, and while he lay there we just stared, a train car full of uncaring observers, I didn't even think to help, someone did, a professional looking man kneeled down and helped the man into his seat, and looked around casually, and I know it's not how he intended, but I felt and still feel like his eyes stopped at me, comma it was probably nothing, but I've never been more ashamed in my life than when that man scanned the crowd, and I was just an onlooker, Five years later I see that face when I stop on my way to work the help shovel snow, or hold the door open for someone, any little thing I can do to not be a casual onlooker. Comma I've had a lot happen in my life, but that one look has changed me forever. He broke the bystander effect in more ways than he'll ever know. I was sitting on a low wall in downtown Toronto reading a book with my backpack on the ground in front of me. A man walks by and trips over my bag kicking it forward a foot or so. He gathers himself, turns to me, and immediately starts apologizing for kicking my bag. At the same time, I apologize for leaving it somewhere it could be tripped over. We both say sorry three or four times each, pause, and laugh. He goes on his way. I keep reading my book, and I never forget the great Canadian sorry fight. 
A few years back I was taking the bus back to my house and an elderly man asked me if I knew where the vet on X street was. I said I wasn't sure where the vet was but the street was close to my place so I could help him find it. When we got to my stop I told him to get off the bus as well and when I was about to pay the driver he said he was going to pay for both of us. But I immediately said, thanks, but you don't have to pay for me, I have money. He just looked at me with a straight face and said, of course you have money, otherwise what would you be doing in the bus? I'll never forget the feeling of getting owned by an elderly man on the bus. Side note, after we got off the bus, I helped him find the vet and he said he was doing the path he was going to do tomorrow with his nephew grandson and dog, because he didn't want to get lost. That's a good grandpa. At a restaurant with my friend and this little girl, 8 or 9 years old, walks up to my roommate, front to front with about 2 inches between, puts her hands in each the front pockets on the roomies hoodie and makes 10 seconds of eye contact. Then walks over to directly in front of me, reaches up and zips my hoodie down while maintaining eye contact, then goes and stands behind an elderly lady that was still eating and leans into the back of her hair for a couple seconds. Then the older guy that has been up at the counter paying for the last minute or so says okay hot dog, let's go and she whips around and leaves with the guy. We still joke about hot dog. Me and my buddies had just finished seeing a concert and bar hopping in the city. We decide to hit up a $1 slice pizza place before we call it a night. We're all in this pizza place, and a girl walks in and my one buddy goes up to her and says happy birthday. I thought my buddy knew her, but he didn't. My buddies start walking out and I stay back and the girl told me it was actually her birthday. I even asked her to show me her license and it was in fact her birthday. I was on a school trip to Italy. And we were on the dome of the St. Peter's Basilica. I ran across a fairly handsome Danish dude a few times on the way up and down. And at the top he told me I'm not gay, but I would be for you. I'm not gay either, but a compliment is a compliment and we took pictures. I still think about it when I'm feeling down. TBH. You gotta show us the pics bro. Well, it happened quite recently but I'm pretty sure I won't forget about it. Last May, I went with a friend to the Orkney Islands. The ferry arrived there at 11pm. We didn't have accommodation booked for that night in Kirkwall. We tried to find one but it was £120 or more. We met some friendly taxi drivers who told us that there was a waiting area where we could spend the night. We went there and it was freezing but at least it had a bathroom. We barred the door just in case. We were just two 20 years old girls, so we weren't taking chances. We spent around two or three miserable hours there. I put like four layers of clothes on, and around 2am you could see light already. And then we heard voices. It turns out two guys had spotted us. They worked as security guards for the harbor and they were incredible nice. They gave us coffee, snacks and led us to a waiting area with heating. I won't forget because they turned a horrible night into a great early morning. Also I got some incredible pics of the sunrise thanks to them. If they ever read this, I hope they know how much it meant for us. Middle of the day, the 4th of April 2012. I was walking home from the bus stop, in the middle of the day because I'd just been made redundant and sent home. I had a work phone at the time, so that had to be left behind. No phone, nothing to listen to as I walked, feeling pretty sorry for myself. An old man standing in his driveway called out to me, short, speaking with a heavy Greek or Italian accent. He asked if I could go inside and change the time on his clock. He didn't know how to do it since daylight savings ended a few days or maybe a week or so before. I had nothing better to do. I went inside and figured it out fairly quickly, and changed the time on his oven microwave clock too. He said thanks, and that he was a widow and his son doesn't live in Melbourne, and it's a very lonely life. I had no idea what to say to that. I said sorry I guess, and I knew he was desperate for someone to talk to, but I had to figure out how I was going to pay rent and feed my family. I wasn't feeling chatty so I stayed maybe another minute or so and went on my way home, maybe 100 meters away. Never saw him again. The little red car that he owned was always parked in the driveway, pretty sure he never drove it. It was always there, every time I walked or drove past. Maybe 9 months later, the little red car wasn't there anymore. Another month after that the house was up for sale. Now there are two different cars parked in that driveway. 
This one kid I played Star Wars make believe at a park with when I was like 5. No clue why I remember him but I remember his favorite character was Lando Calrissian. I had to go to an urgent care because I aggravated an old knee injury from my job but couldn't afford the payment. I had maybe $10 in my account and they wanted $50. The nurse told me to go to the hospital, which would have been heck with the time waiting, walking from my car, and then the bill later only for them to tell me they didn't know what was wrong. I was hobbling my way out when an old lady, maybe 70-80 stopped me and told me she would cover it for me. I was so happy. I thanked her and hugged her and asked for her details so I could pay her back. She told me that wasn't necessary and to pay it forward when I could. I was on a bus and there was this absolutely enormous black guy, possibly the most intimidating looking person I've ever laid eyes on. Massive muscles, popping veins, and dreadlocks. Old lady was struggling to get up when the bus stopped. This guy went over to her and helped her up with the most delicate let me help you with that. I'll never forget that and it concreted one of the bigger lessons in life don't judge a book by its cover. I pity the fool who doesn't help Nana. I was walking through town once and this guy stopped me to have a chat about God. I don't believe in God and would usually just say sorry no time or something but I was feeling good and decided to have a chat. It was actually a pretty good chat too. He just wanted to hear my views and didn't push anything on me which is honestly the first and only time that someone hasn't tried to push their views on me when talking to a stranger about religion. I had the exact same thing but with a lady. The same. She just wanted to hear my views and didn't push anything. It was a pretty good chat too. It was as if she just wanted to understand how I saw it. A hitchhiker I didn't pick up. I felt such an incredible pull to him that even after a few kilometers I couldn't shake it. I was a woman traveling alone in a rural area and the pull was so strong I turned around and went back to pick him up. He was getting into a truck as I got there and I effectively followed the truck 50 kilometers to the next town. My destination. The whole trip I had the feeling that I'd missed something important. A real sense of loss. Turns out he was actually a demon with weak mind control trying to trick you into picking him up so he could steal your soul. I was sitting on the subway for a long commute and was generally agitated from the start. I was one of three or four people on the train and this chick pulled out a noisy plastic container of cookies and started eating them while I was thinking how inconsiderate. Doesn't she know you're not supposed to eat on the subway rude B. She's going to leave crumbs everywhere. Then she turned and looked at me to offer me some and, though I refused, I felt horrible for just thinking she was a nasty person at first. The way she offered was so genuine and friendly. I stopped categorizing people. You're still not supposed to eat on the subway but just because people break the rules or don't realize they're being inconsiderate doesn't mean they're a bad person overall. Since then, I've tried my best to never assume the worst in people. Assuming everyone is just intentionally being a jerk will make you a miserable person. This one simple grocery store sugar cookie eater taught me that important lesson. Maybe she felt her blood sugar going low and would have died if she didn't eat them. It took me years to get over that feeling of everyone else is a jerk because I got annoyed at this random thing they did. I had to force myself to give the benefit of the doubt as my first reaction to something. Because most of the time, people are just living. Not trying to frick with you. A woman outside the grocery store looking distressed and hopeless. I was only there to pick up one thing I needed for a recipe. A sauce or seasoning or something. It's been a while. She was standing outside groceries in hand desperately trying to ask people for help. I'm a naturally paranoid person. And when she came up to me that paranoia immediately struck. Initially I was going to just make an excuse to get myself out of social interaction but for some reason I stopped and listened to what she was asking. She was desperately trying to borrow someone's phone to call her sister who was supposed to be there to pick her up as she didn't have a car. Understandably being alone outside a grocery store in the middle of nowhere with arms loaded with food that will spoil soon can be a bit of a modern day horror story. When she asked my if she could borrow my phone I was, again, paranoid as all heck but I pushed that down and ended up calling her sister for her, just to confirm it was a real number and let her leave a message. Even though her sister didn't pick up the look of relief on her face was wonderful. She thanked me and I went into the store to get my chipotle mayo or whatever the heck I was there for that day and by the time I left the store she was gone. 
probably never going to forget her, simply because I know how it feels to be in that situation where things aren't going as they should and everything just seems like it's catastrophically crashing down around you. This might get buried in this post but the one I'll always remember is this tiny old Scottish lady. One night, I live in the south end of Scotland but my family is English I get a phone call telling me to get back now cause my mum could die any second. I rush to the station and jump on the first train, bawling my eyes out. Everyone does me the courtesy of politely pretending that I am not openly sobbing. Besides this one tiny old lady who plonks down right next to me, hands me a bag of Maltesers aka little chocolates, and goes what's up chick and I just break down crying on this random old woman's shoulder while she pulls more and more chocolate out of some magical part of her coat and by the time we get to her stop she gives me a hug and goes ah, it all works out in the end, even if it feels like it's going to crap at first and wandered off. A guy, maybe 13, 14, around my age at the time, that helped me and my father navigate the Szczecin tram system, Poland. He spoke German to us and gave us his map. I tried to find him later on. He actually got off the stop we wanted to get off to, but we accidentally stayed on the tram. He was so nice. I held a door open for an elderly lady who then wished me a great day and commented that I was brought up well. Lady, you have no idea what I get up to when I'm not holding open doors for the likes of you. When I was 14 or so, I held the door open for an elderly couple. Instead of thanking or acknowledging me, they just said to each other OHH there's still a few left back and forth a few times. Little did they know I was high as frick. That eyeball peeking through the bathroom stall at me while I was taking a dump. That was one creepy freaking eyeball man. I'll never take a dump in a public restroom ever again. After visiting the Louvre about 10 years ago, mum and I were taking the metro back toward our hotel. A man got on holding a little boy that looked like he escaped from one of the renaissance paintings. He had beautiful golden curls and big blue eyes. He looked like a doll. Not real. Hope that adorable kiddo is doing well. Thanks for that beautiful story, old French whore. I was in Portland, Oregon to visit my dad for Thanksgiving and was walking down the street with him. This lady sneaks up on me and pats my head saying there are women who would kill for that hair, I'm a dude, and then she just walks off. I was in Seoul, South Korea working on an assignment and didn't know the language. It was a year of unprecedented floods and during one of the worst ones, I stupidly decided to still get to the subway and get to work. Water was up to my waist. Picture a guy wading in water while holding up an umbrella to protect his face for some reason. And at some point I cut my hand on something in the water. By the time I reached the subway, I was bleeding all over a wet handkerchief I had. A girl sat next to me and started pointing at my hand, saying what must have been concerned things in Korean. I was replying in English yeah I'm an idiot. She opens up her bag, takes out band-aids and fixes up my hand. It was the nicest thing a stranger has ever done for me and I'll never forget it. You have been visited by the romantic doggo. Comment love is magic so you never fall in the friend zone. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.